This episode of Rolling Tape is brought to you by Suspense with a Camera, a filmmaker's guide to Hitchcock's techniques. Available in bookstores now. Peter D. Marshall is a filmmaker and a directing coach with 40 years experience in the motion picture and television industry. His directorial credits include episodes of 21 Jump Street, The Black Stallion, and John Woo's To Catch a Thief. Peter has just written a book for filmmakers called Making the Magic Happen. Welcome to the show, Peter. Thank you very much. Glad to be here. Let's talk about the five stages of um, filmmaking that you discuss in your book. Well, the five stages of shooting a film is basically what everybody should be doing all the time. And those five stages are uh, block, light, rehearse, adjust, and shoot. And, uh, you know, basically filmmaking is, is about that whole process. So I've spent my career 40 years on the big movie sets, Hollywood movie sets, uh, independent movies. Uh, and this is the process that people are supposed to follow in order to make everything sort of um, smoother, if you will, for your film. So the first thing is blocking. Now, blocking, we could spend four hours talking about blocking. But blocking is essentially the relationship of the camera to the actors. And the uh, director always has an idea in their head about their shots, their ideas, where they want to move the actors. Uh, but it's all based also on location and also on your shot list. The key thing that I, I talk a lot about in my book is that actors are a very important part of this process. So they want to contribute something also to uh, your blocking. So the first thing is always blocking. You come into the location, the set, wherever you are, and you ask the actors to, well, there's the front door. There you go. Just try it. See where we go. They know the script. They know the text. So now it's just up to them and yourself to try to find out where everything's going to go. So you go through a series of two or three blocking stages where you start to sort of hone it in a bit, sort of, okay, so he went to the window, but I think we should just come over here. Can we come over here? Yeah, I think we can do that. And the director of photography also has a major thing to say in this because it's about camera placement. So the key of the whole thing is blocking. Where are your actors? going to be going on the set and for the whole crew to watch this, it's important for the grips, the camera department, the lighting, uh, the boom, the sound, everyone needs to know where everybody's going. And after that process, when you're set, uh, <clears throat> that's when the, the assistant camera puts the marks on the ground, you do it for marks, you know, they're gonna stop here, you're gonna stop here. And then you talk about the shots. You say, you say, okay, well, here's my master shot here. And this is still part of the blocking process, right? You sort of block, this, so I'm gonna do a master shot here, I'm gonna go in, I'll do two overs, two singles here, et cetera, et cetera. You work it all out. Sometimes uh, big sets, you have the viewfinder where you start looking through and you keep those actors there. You keep the actors there so that they're also aware of what's happening, but you can actually see yourself. Oh, well, maybe we move over here, move over here. So blocking is the first and most, one of the most important parts of this, these five stages. And uh, just you and I were talking just before we went live and so many people don't do it. Oh, it's a waste of time. You stand here, you stand here, put the camera here, shoot. Well, the problem is, Sometime later, the actor may want to do something different. You have to relight, or it doesn't exactly suit the scene. It's teamwork, it's collaboration. It's the crew and the actors have to work together to facilitate this blocking. So after everything is done blocking, the second stage, of course, is lighting. And lighting is what takes the, the most time on a movie set. We spend most of our time waiting for lighting to happen, camera placement, all of that. So that's the big process. That could take 20 minutes, it could take three hours. Uh, depends what your budget is and what the scene is. Uh, so after the lighting stage, then you do, <clears throat> so block, light, rehearse. Then the third stage is you bring the actors back. And this is for a rehearsal. Now, this isn't really for the actor's rehearsal. Uh, it's, a very, it's a technical rehearsal. And, and actors that are film savvy understand that this is not about doing all the emotions and everything here because they're going to stop you. Then they have to get the focus. Then the DP wants to make little adjustments. So this is the first time that the crew and the actors now have an opportunity to kind of work the scene out that the the director envisioned. So the, you know, the AD locks it up and the director calls action and you're rehearsing, you're not shooting. And so everything goes, it's a little messy all the time, 
okay, the camera has to sort itself out. The boom, we see the boom dipping into the shot. We have to get him in a different position. That's rehearsal. And again, depending on how complicated the shot is, is it just two people sitting down or is it people moving on a street and turning a corner and vehicles coming in? It's all based on how complicated. So after the third stage of rehearsal, uh, then it's what we call tweaking or finals or adjustments. And really what that is, it's everybody now has an opportunity to make final adjustments. So the director of photography may want to adjust the light. The camera department starts doing their focus. Hair, makeup and wardrobe come in and start doing their finals on the cast. This is the finals. This extras are getting ready to move. So this is that fourth stage. Once that's all set, then the AD of course runs the set then they'll just, they'll still time for shooting. And basically AD will lock it up and say, roll sound and everything goes. The director calls action and off we go. And then you do one, two, three, how many takes you want to do. Uh, so let's say we're doing a master first. After that's finished, you kind of then, you then do sort of mini ones. You sort of re-block, okay, we're gonna, now, okay, we've done our master. Now we're gonna go in for this two shot where he comes in the door, walks to the kitchen and comes and sits down. So you just re-block that slightly. You're still continuity, but you want, you're in a different camera position. So you may want to change the thing. So then you block, then you light it and rehearse, tweet and shoot. And this process for me has been 40 years <laughs> on all the movies. So that's the process. And so many people ignore the blocking part. And I know I've just said that, but this is so critical that it's just all the pieces come together when you know how to block a scene efficiently. Right. And when, when the actors, uh, as you said, you have the actors block first and then you go ahead and change it to what you want. How, how much do you let the actors influence the actual blocking of the final scene? This is a very controversial uh, question because a lot of times actors or sorry, directors literally know what their shot is. They know you want, you want, I want you to move here, here, here. The thing is that actors need to contribute. They, they want organic performances. And so the key thing between a director and actor is trust, like any relationship. And by allowing the actors to participate in the blocking, and you, you sort of frame it. You're not going to say, we'll go anywhere, all right? Uh, you, you have an idea. They know the text. They know they're coming in and sitting at a table. They know that. But you allow them that. And so I think smart directors, experienced directors who know how to work with actors, basically allow them to do that and then what I call just you're, you're watching for magic moments. And there's, there's moments that you as a director, when you sit at home drawing your shot list and your schematics and your storyboards, you don't know until you get on the set and the actors are there, things change. And so this is an opportunity for the director to say, this is a better idea than I have, right? Or the director of photography come, hey, if we can come over here, this is a better shot than, than the two of us try to figure out in, at Starbucks over coffee. So. It's a very important part of the process. And the key to the whole thing is the actor-director relationship. When, you, when you're doing the lighting, now, now we're gonna jump up to the lighting part and you actually send the actors away. How do you light the actors? Uh, how would like, especially indie filmmakers might have this question. How do you light the actors if they're not there? And um, I'd also like to go back to the previous question about the blocking. Say uh, an actor decides how they want to be lit. How do you handle that? Well, that's two questions there. I'll answer the, the, fir the first one first is there's stand-ins in movies that, that usually have stand-ins. And these are, uh, we call first team of the actors, second team of the stand-ins. And you usually have minimum two actors who are watching everything. There's stand-ins and they watch what the actors do. Then they stand in place of the actors for the lighting and for the camera. Now in big Hollywood sets, professional sets, you have, you're paying money for stand-ins to be there. They're, they are an integral part of your movie because they help the director of photography in the camera department with the lighting. Now, a lot of times when you're doing a short film or there's very few cast, the AD stands in, the producer stands in, somebody stands in place so that the director of photography can actually light something, right? So you have to light. So that's, that's sort of how that works. Uh, the second thing, if an actor talks about how to light, but that's a whole other ballgame that I think I'll let directors of photography deal with. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Because, you know, I, I've been on sets and I've seen how some actors like, I, you know, got to get my good side. I want to, you know, a little yes. bit of green here and um, just didn't know how to handle that. 
Um, well, I, I think from a direct, from a director of photography's point of view, they say, well, you don't tell me how to light. I don't tell you how to act. Yeah, so that, that's, I've heard, I heard that question before. So that's one way of doing it. it but depends on who the actor is. That's all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, can people get a hold of you, Peter, if they so chose? Yes, absolutely. How would they yes. do that? Uh, I can give them my, uh, my email. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Uh, it's PDM at actioncutprint.com. Okay, and uh, I appreciate you joining me here. It was a quick 10 minutes, it went by fast. Uh, we're gonna have you back on. There's the, Your book is amazing, has a ton of information for filmmakers. And uh, we'll have you back on talking about more subjects. Thank you very much, you take care. <laughs>